Hey guys, it's Bang for Buck PC Gamer here. Now I'm gonna show you my settings that I use for my uh, PC SX2. Um, for those of you who is not familiar with PC SX2, it's a PS2 emulator. Um, I'm gonna quickly talk about my hardware. I'm using a GTX 980, and my processor's on Intel i7 3770, which is overclocked to 4.2 gigahertz. It's idling now, so it does rest at 1600 megahertz. Um, I'm using 8 gigs of RAM and that's pretty much all the important stuff now the settings I use for the games, my most of my games is I pretty much leave this at stock, I don't really mess with this but if you do want to change some of the settings to suit your PC you can um, once you highlight the actual uh, option it does kind of give you a pop-up which explains what it does so you can always have a look at that and if you're unsure just uh, read what the actual option is and then you can select accordingly so these are the settings I use for EE forward slash IOP with the VUs I didn't change anything here either this is pretty much how you get it when you set up the emulator from the first time so nothing special here either. Um, with this you can make some changes for example the power frame rate is normally 50 frames per second but I like running my games at 60 so I've edited that to 60. Um, also frame skipping and turbo settings these are settings you can customize to make your game run faster for example when I'm trying to level up on Final Fantasy I'll enable um, the turbo boost so I can just basically do battles a lot quicker and just level up a lot faster so it does come in handy you can tweak that as well here so GS window that's if you really want to play your game in window mode which I don't so you can obviously change the settings here to anything that you like and enable vsync and things like that with the speed hacks MTVU, this is for multi-threaded um, use of the emulator, so if you've got three or more cores, so if you've got a quad core CPU, a six core or even an eight core CPU then this is definitely an option you should tick. There are some other options um, which you can use as well, it gives you a huge speed up in games. If you need them, use them, but for me I don't actually use them, so you know I don't need them because all my games are working fine. So you can go ahead and test if they make your game work faster or slower if you're having any lag issues. But if you're not then you know just leave MTVU ticked and that should generally sort everything out. Um, with these cycles, um, if you have it at one, basically these are the safest options so you'll have maximum compatibility with the games and you'll have less chance of um, having any artifacts or any kind of other incompatibility so the lower you leave the number the, the higher your emulation compatibility is going to be uh, with game fixes it's always best to leave it at automatic game fixes you can enable them manually but um, the emulator is smart enough now to enable the actual fix for the specific game you're using so it's always best to leave it at auto okay now moving on to my graphical and plugin settings now the BIOS I'm using I have quite a few options but the one I use is my version 2.20 which was I think a 2006 BIOS um, seems to work pretty fine for me um, if you want to get a BIOS you pretty much Google is your friend when it comes to finding a BIOS but if you're really struggling then inbox me and I'm trying to help you out there with plugins I'm using the GSDX5875 version 0 0.116 and now I use the DirectX 11 hardware settings you can choose from DirectX 9 and also you can use OpenGL but I find DirectX 11 is pretty much the, the best option um, the resolution I usually use for my games is 3840 by 2400 and this is my 4k resolution settings 
but this doesn't work for all games which I'm going to show you some of the Namco fighting games like Soul Calibur and uh, Tekken once you use a a certain resolution you will become you'll have these vertical um, black bars down the screen which pretty much is annoying and you want to avoid that so I'll show you what resolutions can work to avoid that I enable shader boost you can tweak your contrast to make the colors a little bit rich I usually have a contrast of 55 it kind of gives a bit more rich color um, enable FXAA um, shader effects and you can enable all of these things as well just to help boost the graphical settings but another one is uh, hardware hacks now these are hit and miss with some games for example I, I play quite a lot of Final Fantasy so um, an aggressive CRC kinda helps um, remove some um, makes the game look a bit sharper that's what they say so have a look at which ones they are and um, you can pretty much get some improvement in some games with the Nvidia hack if you're having widescreen issues this will help but it doesn't help in every single game for example the Namco game which I was talking about if you still have this enabled once you set a compatible resolution you still have the black bar so for me um, it's not really a problem so I always leave this unticked um, and that's pretty much it, nothing really special left to explain obviously you can either mount your games by a virtual ISO or you can actually pop them in the CD drive if you've got um, if you want to do it that way so that's one way to do it and that's pretty much it I want to show you how a game runs, so I'm going to select Final Fantasy X, actually no, I'll select Street Fighter, I've been playing that, I'll do one match just to show you that the ISO does work and the PlayStation emulator does work pretty well. If you're wondering what um, the information is in the corner, I'm pretty much using the MSI Afterburner. Street Fighter EX3 Ten. So as you can see the emulator works pretty fine, keeps a steady frame rate of 60 frames per second. Now as I was explaining earlier, when you're using a Namco fighting game like Tekken, if you're using for example a resolution like 4K, um, you'll have uh, some issues with uh, these vertical black lines on the screen which I'm going to show you how to um, remove in a minute. So as you can see now, you've got these vertical black lines which are a pain in the ass. You don't really want to be playing your game looking at that. So what you need to do is use a specific resolution. The resolution I use is 1200 by 1600. Go back in the game. And the black lines are gone. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist. Jimmy, then, then. Pick you up. 
Round one. Fight. <laughs> So there you have it, that's pretty much it. As you can see the emulator works great, steady 60 frames per second as you would expect. I mean you don't really even need a high spec machine to to get great results. Um, you could probably get similar results with just a standard quad core processor with, with a decent clock speed of like 3.5 gigahertz and something like a, a GTX 480 would definitely give you 60 frames per second at 1080p. So. Um, it's good just to be able to play some of your old favorites on the PS2. Um, I do use some other emulators like the Dolphin emulator to run some Wii games and some um, Nintendo GameCube games. So if you want me to show you the settings of that, just let me know and I'll do a video of that as well. So that's pretty much it guys. Thanks for watching.